Travis Wayne Goodsell. Uh, my download speed is down about a hundred, but uh, upload speed is still normal. <coughs> but uh, god damn that Mormon employee of YouTube. I'm being assassinated. Anyone aiding and abetting are also guilty of assassination. You don't have to be the one to pull the trigger to be guilty of the same offense. Dear God, he was not going to process my reminiscing video. I had to call out for administration because he was then retaliating when I filed a complaint. Mormons do not understand. This Mormon does not understand. Mormons are in the news being murderers, being criminal. I only expose it. Again, you cover it up you become guilty of the same crime. When you are a witness to a crime, you're supposed to report it. And yes, if the police and the government are in on it, kind of sucks for you. But as long as it's at the low levels, like the Lafferty family, under the banner of heaven, the government will go after them and prosecute them to the fullest extent of the law. You know, like Daybell and Vallow. So where did all this evil of Mormons come from? All this criminal behavior, murderous behavior, For this, we have to go back into church history. In uh, 2017, we were studying the Doctrine and Covenants in Sunday school. It was near the end of the year, so we were getting to the lesson on Joseph Smith's assassination. Joseph Smith's assassination. Yes, I literally am a type and symbol, or he's a type and symbol of me. And it's the same group of people involved in both assassinations. Go figure. But Bill Blunt, my neighbor, former bishop, sat uh, across the aisle in the Relief Society room where we were holding Sunday school and uh, leaned over, tapped me on the shoulder and uh, asked me if I knew that Joseph Smith had a, a pistol. And I told him, yeah, my third great grandfather, John Solomon Fulmer, gave him his pistol. And it was passed down through my my dad's grandma's line my dad's mom's line my grandmother that that was the case so I already knew and yet it had never occurred to me that the church never revealed this to us because he himself was kind of surprised and then said did you know there was that he had two and I went uh, no. And he had a six-shooter and a one-shot. And so now I was curious, well, I wonder which one my third great-grandfather had. He gave to Joseph Smith. And then who had the other one, or did Joseph Smith have two in his hand? 
when the mob came. But then again, we are told in the church that Joseph Smith was never able to get off a shot, let alone he never had a gun. That he was unarmed, and the mob came and killed him, along with his brother. But I knew he had a gun, a pistol, but it never really occurred to me to uh, fact check, to say, well, what, if he had a pistol, didn't he use it? And since I've seen apologists try to claim what they know nothing about, to make up a story to explain it all, using fallacy arguments, rather than looking at the evidence of the crime scene, a forensic investigation of the crime scene, which you would think that Dallin A. Jokes, being uh, all educated as a lawyer, got past the bar, was a prosecuting attorney, and then was a part of the Supreme Court Justice of Utah, that he would know about these processes for the courts. After all, I found he written a book on it. Yeah. Turns out, he's a very evil man. And a liar. And so, I uh, proceeded to do uh, an initial research on Carthage jail assassination to find out what was going on. And then I had found some pieces of evidence and I had to stop. I was uncovering that it was an inside job, not a separate mob unrelated. And I had to stop. Because in order to do effective research using science, I needed to go back to the beginning and work my way forward to figure it all out. Because I didn't want to do what Mormons and ex-Mormons do and jump to a conclusion without examining the full range of evidence involved. was already in hot water because I was saying that Joseph or the Book of Mormon was correct in saying that Adam fell. Did you catch it? Do I need to repeat it? Adam fell. Notice anybody missing? Notice somebody in place of that missing person. Familiar with the cultural tradition to blame the gender of that missing person, the sex of that missing person. And so, yeah, I would eventually get banned from attending church by my bishop here in this ward because I said that the Book of Mormon is true. That Adam did fall. Found it in the Egyptian documents. It's amazing. Book of Mormon says it's from Egyptian documents. Wouldn't that be true then? Uh, nope. I'm going against the prophets. Yeah. The origin of church history reveals all of this to us. And yes, the crowning capstone of evidence I found out not too long ago. It's found hidden in the Joseph Smith papers. Brigham Young purposely did not want it to be canonized in the Doctrine and Covenants. 
after all, he did remove uh, monogamy so that he could put in polygamy the year before he died. And so I did my research starting with Joseph Smith Sr. having married Lucy Mack and living in Vermont with their new family. And had to be detailed to the point of knowing the meaning of each child's name. From Alvin to Joseph to Hiram, which I came to find out Hiram was not spelled as we currently know it. Etc. And found the religion that they were a part of. So the Joseph Smith history tells us that Lucy Mack and some siblings were Presbyterian and doesn't say anything about the father and his religion and then Joseph being partial to the Methodist which was the religion of Emma and her family and her family <clears throat> as it's a Methodist who tells Joseph there's no such thing as visions and revelations in these days it all died with the Apostles so, yeah, prophet, seer, revelator, and translator all died with Joseph Smith. Interesting connection. And then I found a connection with Canandaigua, New York. Because Canandaigua, New York is connected to Joseph Smith Sr., William Morgan, and Heber C. Kimball. And I did a video not too long ago where Brigham Young himself is also connected. That's where he started doing missionary work, was in that area. What was he doing in that area? Who was he converting? Church keeps it all a sacred secret. Having just published Saints Volume 3 to be faith promoting and leave out all the bad stuff. It's not faith promoting. I don't want Mormons to know the truth about the evil of the church specifically lying and covering things up, such that Mormons believe that the Joseph Smith history is literal history, just like the Book of Mormon is literal history, just like the Gospels and the Bible as a whole, and all other documents written at the same time period, which were not included in the Bible, all literal history. except for the book of Revelation and other books that specifically state that they're apocalyptic literature along with the book of Revelation. And so doing my history research, I cannot put in Joseph Smith sees Jesus and Heavenly Father because there's no evidence. It has to be scientific. To put in, this is when Joseph Smith sees Jesus and Heavenly Father, as if it actually did happen, would be to corrupt the scientific forensic investigation. It would be biased tainted and so that research though I know of it the first vision the meeting with 
Nephi and the Egyptian gold plates were all set to the side. That's what's called hearsay. Even though it's Joseph Smith who said it, that doesn't make it literal history. That doesn't make it true. Despite my defense attorney, whose family here married to the Skousens, who are part of the little black book of members of the secret Gadianton Band of America. And so Canandaigua, New York, as I have come to learn, has been the keystone of church history. Because Joseph Smith Sr. was a York Rites Master Mason of that lodge. William Morgan was writing his book or books in Canandaigua, New York, rather than at his home in Batavia, where David Miller of the press there fronted him the money to work on it. He specifically was in Canandaigua working on the book. He was a York Rites Mason, just like Joseph Smith Sr. was. He was a Royal Ark Mason, which means number seven in ranking. Master Mason is number three. And there are specific rules for Freemasonry prior to 1826. Current masonry is not the standard of measurement for the past. Nothing current must be used to bias the past. That's what's called an anachronism. When you impose something more current into the past that did not exist. Tennis shoes, for example. If we find a document and it says Joseph Smith laced up his tennis shoes, his Nike Air Jordans, and headed off to convert the masses and give a speech and about Heavenly Father and Jesus and blah blah blah, we immediately know it's a fake. Because we know that Air Jordans were not invented until a certain period of time that is more current in fact we can even google search this information as a, an extreme example to help illustrate it there is the book Tennis Shoes Among the Nephites a little kids book for Mormons April 1st, April Fool's Day, seriously guys, 1985, Air Jordans hit the markets. Uh, the original Air Jordan sneakers were produced exclusively for Michael Jordan in late 1984 and released to the public on April 1st, 1985. The shoes were designed for Nike by Peter Moore, Tinker Hatfield, and Bruce Kilgore. And probably among the greatest shoes ever designed and built. If only I ever had any to test that theory. <clears throat> but I did see some uh, young kids uh, here in Utah uh, had gone out to Graywell one day and uh, walking back to the bus stop when uh, I saw these three kids and two of them had Air Jordans. So, yeah, they had 
some cool parents, that's for sure. <clears throat> and so, any claim in any kind of writing that puts Air Jordans before April 1st, 1985, we now know is a lie. This is how D. Michael Quinn and others who were doing church history research, who were publishing books about church history, should all have been aware of and not spreading lies that ex-Mormons to this day are still spreading because they trust the authors and so it was clear that whatever book William Morgan was wanting to write to warn America having to do with Freemasonry which couldn't have been Yorkrites because he was Yorkrites he got advanced all the way up to Royal Ark but if you're going to believe that all Freemasonry is the same you're going to be deceived there was this other main group called Scottish Rites, the 33 degree Masons. So if you mistakenly assume Joseph Smith Sr. was Scottish Rites rather than York Rites, or that York Rites also has the 33 degree honorary ranking, you're spreading a lie. You're not trusting the forensics in your research. And so doing this research, I then learned that in New York, at least Western New York, they had segregated strips. That if you were in the Palmyra, uh, Manchester Canandaigua strip you were York Rites. Hiram was York Rites in Palmyra. Not the same lodge because they're family. Again the rules are different prior to 1826. As I hope I don't say 1926 or reverse anachronism bump up the past into the current which is easy for me to do and I've caught myself on numerous occasions calling the Civil War the Revolutionary War or vice versa and mixing up dates I did one just the other day where I'm listening to it to check for quality and I, I hear myself uh, I think I think it was a date issue that I messed up on and I had to put in the te in a text at the v point of the video dear God and put the correction <laughs> but uh, Eber C. Kimball masonry which there are some differences in his journal account but the church doesn't want that released on Wikipedia but what is released on Wikipedia is still damaging to the church because he claims not only did he violate all the rules prior to 1826 for Freemasonry, the specific rule violations exposed that he knew about Joseph Smith Sr. and William Morgan. 
He even says he went to the Canandaigua Lodge to apply for a skipping of rank to number seven from Master Mason number three, where William Morgan had to certify, swearing an oath, saying, yes, I did advance through the ranks to apply for this one. Heber just says, nope, I was a Master Mason in the first year, he says the first three degrees, and then the next year, went to Canandaigua, hey, I want to be number seven. And he says it was approved, but says, oh, the documents were destroyed, so nobody will ever know. But trust me, I was approved by the Master Mason in the Lodge of Canandaigua. Does not say his name he thinks the records are destroyed. So what then is this threat? Well, I've done the videos. Thomas B. Marsh was threatened by the Danites to leave. There was no milk scrappings. That was all a lie by Joseph Fielding Smith Sr. or George Albert Smith. Sorry. I think. I don't have it in front of me. It was one of the Smiths. But I think it was out George Albert Smith. A relative. And uh, he s talks about the Danites that were a, a secret Gadianton group within the church who told him that Joseph Smith knew of them and approved of them. and that they were plotting to overthrow the United States of America and the world. The Mormon War was the Danites going into Davies County trying to overthrow the election results. Sound familiar? And then, with their hundred plus people, Danites, went to the sheriff's home and then to the judge's home, forced them to sign documentation that Joseph Smith threatened them. The Joseph Smith Papers vindicates Joseph Smith on that day. He was in Far West. He was busy doing document signing with Emma. The towns were too far away for Joseph to take care of the documents the one day in Far West and then travel, because remember, they don't have cars. go to Davies County to overthrow the election results as the leader of the Danites. And if you still aren't convinced, because you're not wanting to do a thorough research like I've done, it's right there in our scriptures the whole time. Section 117, Newell K. Whitney, member of a secret combination that Joseph Smith encoded as the Nicolaitan Band. And I'm sure all of you have checked the footnotes to see what that refers to. That you would know it wasn't a real name. It was coded from the book of Revelation. During the Roman period of time. Church 
Church claims they decoded all of it for the 1981 edition of our triple. They missed a bunch. Especially the name of our Christ. Jesus is code. Just like Nicolation Band is code. Shinehawk, code. Adam on Diamond, the actual man. <laughs> Otherwise known as Sun at Noonday. So it gets kind of complicated when you have actual names and coded names in the same documents. But that's the point. because of this threat that caused William Morgan to disappear. And it is said that Masons were involved with the disappearance. But again, he was not an enemy of Yorkrites, even though the account says that the Yorkrites in Batavia were upset with him and with David Miller of the print press. And so Joseph Smith's murder was never solved. The three on trial were acquitted as Joseph Smith shot them. But Lo and behold, Joseph Smith Jr., the very next year, according to his account, obtains Egyptian gold plates. That is the learning of the Jews and the language of the Egyptians. That two personages who are described as the sun at noonday tell him that Christianity is an abomination. So why are Mormons calling Joseph Smith a Christian and Jesus as our Christ? Oh yeah, section 115. Joseph Smith prophesies that in the latter days the great and abominable church having usurped Joseph's church after his murder 19 July 1840 that did not get put in the Doctrine and Covenants by Brigham Young would be renamed the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints and gee, Nelson got up, raised an idol god Jesus on top of the cornerstone, but said it was the chief cornerstone of the cornerstone, creating a brand new word for a brand new concept for building construction. There's no such thing as the chief cornerstone of the cornerstone. There's just a cornerstone. Interestingly, 19 July 1840, Joseph Smith refers to the capstone as the top stone. As he refers to mountain cities of Zion and New Jerusalem for the millennium, which in section 115, it will be called the Church of Ammon in Zion. My name in Zion will it be called. The truth is out there, but it, even though it appears to be an X file, forensic investigation reveals the truth. There are no aliens, there are no demon spirits. Joseph was not a witch. 
See, Mormons claim that Joseph Smith, the prophet of God, used revelation, not translation, for the Book of Mormon, the gift and power of God. Whereas ex-Mormons say, well, Joseph Smith Sr. was a part of those new Israelites and was a Freemason, and so Joseph Jr. then was raised that way to be a witch and then created the whole thing up, made it all up. So that's the storyline of ex-Mormons. Do your forensic investigation. Who's the major author of the Book of Mormon? You know this, guys. Mormons deny it. But you, ex-Mormons, you all should know this. Sidney Rigdon. The Solomon Spalding manuscript that never got published in Pittsburgh. South of Harmony, Pennsylvania, which was the town that won out to keep the name from the other town that used to be originally called Harmony, over by Canandaigua, or not Canandaigua, sorry, Susquehanna. but was no longer called Harmony when the Smiths arrived in Palmyra. And so I had a Mormon think he confounded me by linking me. I don't even think he linked me. I think he just told me about it. I had to Google search it myself to see what he was talking about. But claimed that there was a, a house deed during the time where they needed money to pay for the Book of Mormon, Joseph Smith buys a house from his father-in-law at Harmony, Susquehanna River, Pennsylvania. Remember anachronisms? You automatically know it's a fraudulent document because it says Harmony Susquehanna River, Pennsylvania. At the time frame it was written. It's a fraudulent document. It was written as a cover. But why? What was happening to have William Morgan disappeared and then the Smiths used Joseph Jr. to be the front man for a book he found in the ground, Egyptian gold plates, and again, York writes, Knights Templar. Not 33 degree Masons, Knights Templar. So now you gotta study Knights Templar. And oh, Egyptian gold plates, not the Bible, so the Pope is mad. Angry Pope. Friday the 13th. Angry Pope. And then he come to America. The bloodline of King David. To found the New Jerusalem in America. Egyptian gold plates buried in the ground of America, warning of a threat to America in the latter days. Huh. And Thomas B. Marsh is talking about this Danite group claiming Joseph Smith approves of everything they're doing, when clearly he doesn't when clearly they're taking over the church when Joseph Smith keeps getting arrested for what the Danites are doing and Brigham Young is leading the church instead
And then, as Joseph Smith kept getting out of jail, he's then assassinated with two of Brigham Young's twelve. And again, why didn't Brigham Young want to have published in the Doctrine and Covenants 19 July 1840? When Joseph Smith calls out Brigham and his twelve as Judas, who would murder Joseph. And now I, because I've exposed all this, am being treated exactly like Joseph. Framed, locked up, and assassinated. on and talk about the inverted pentagram of the Illuminati. John C. Bennett forming a Halcyon Order of Illuminati on Beaver Island, Michigan. One of James Strang's branch off group. Because he got busted for his polygamy with the Danites. And so he goes back to the Danites to try to come back in and he blew it. He got exposed. He's going to expose the Danites. He can't come back. So he goes and forms his own Illuminati. They just call it different names. And over time, the group has been called by different names, but their symbol remains the same. So that we can know and identify them as the threat to cause the war in Ukraine and to pay for nukes with tithing money. This is why the church wants me assassinated, guys. And I am being betrayed by everyone. Exactly like their four parents who betrayed Joseph Smith. <laughs> 